Whaia, whaia, whaia ki te uru tapu nui o tānei. Tānei te waiora, tānei te pūkenga, tānei te wānanga, tānei te wakaputa nei ki te whaia o ki te ao mārama. Tū te nanga, tū kā maranga, te tui, te rarama, tēnei au, e no o matāra nei. E rongo, whakairi ake ki ronga, tūturi waka maua ki a tēnā. Au mie, uie, tāhi. Ai, ki te whānau o he tōranga pākihi, mō tō mahi whakaritenga ki te kaupapa nei, mē tō mahi tonu me te mō te kaupapa nui, ngā pākihi Māori o Taranaki, tēnei te mei, tēnei te mei, tēnei te mei nunui. Pēra ki te tika kōrero o tō mātou tūpuna, whaia, whaia, whaia ki te tika hurangi, ki te tū oho koe mehe mau ngā teitei. Aneiria, anei tō i rāmutu, tō wanaunga o tiwi o Ngati Maru. I mai ana au i te puna umanga, e tū ana au mō te mōhio i o koutou, ki a mātou kaitia ki hau, me te kai apeno o tēnei tino kaupapa kōrero, te ara a mua ki te tau rua mano rima te kau. Kua mōhio kē koutou pēa ki tāna mahi i te kōtahi tanga o te ati awa. Hō mai te pakipaki mō te whanaunga ko Josh Eckford. Tēnā rā koutou katoa. Nau mai haere mai ki tēnei kōrero. Welcome everyone to our, our panel discussion tonight uh, on Taranaki 2050, um, our Māori future. Um, before we get started and before I introduce uh, the, the lovely panel that I, that I have here today, uh, we'll just start with just some quick housekeeping uh, for those who haven't been here during the day and have just joined us for tonight's session. Um, reminder, the exit is downstairs um, and out through the front door that you came in. Uh, toilets are also downstairs uh, and off to the right. Um, as we're under the indoor gathering limits, uh, under COVID level orange protocols, masks are not mandatory, um, but please wear a mask if you feel comfortable, um, and especially while you're moving around the venue uh, and as you exit uh, the venue tonight for the uh, safety of, the, um, of our hotel, uh, Kaimahi, here at, um, at the Novotel. Um, so ko wai au, ko Taranaki te maunga, ko te ati awa, ko Taranaki te iwi, ko Ngati Rahiri, ko Ngā Mahanga Atairi te hapū, ko Joshua Hitchcock a hau. My name is Joshua. Um, I stand here today as, um, I guess, wearing two hats. Uh, my first as uh, one of the newly appointed uh, trustees uh, of Te Puna Umanga, of Venture Taranaki, uh, and the second uh, as the Po Amataki, the General Manager of Operations here at, at Te Koteitanga uh, o Te Atiawa. Um, and I think that kind of puts me in a, in a unique position to, to see um, and, and, and help shape the, uh, the Māori economy here in, here in Taranaki. And, and I've been fortunate over the last several years to be uh, involved in this, in this kaupapa at a national level um, with, with some work that I've done previously with New Zealand Trade and Enterprise um, and for those of you who, have, who may have seen the, the newsroom uh, documentary over the last several months. Um, that I was asked to front on, on the Māori economy, uh, where we went around and, and spoke to a wide range of, of Māori businesses, um, iwi groups, hapu groups, um, from around, around the country, talking about their values, their aspirations, uh, and, and, and how they've dealt, uh, in particular, with the challenges of, of, of COVID that we've all kind of uh, had to deal with over the last several years. Um, so today, uh, we're looking to kind of regionalise uh, this kōrero uh, and speak to, I guess, what our vision is, uh, what the panellists' vision is, what our collective vision is uh, for the Māori economy in, in, in Taranaki in, in 2050 as part of the, um, the region-wide uh, strategies. So we have Tapu Wairō, uh, the way forward, um, of which one of the four futures um, under that strategy is, is our Māori uh, economy future, and also Taranaki 2050, uh, a piece of work um, that started in 2019 and, and went around around the region and, and spoke to uh, spoke to people throughout Taranaki around what it is our vision um, was 
to help us transition uh, to a low, a low emissions uh, sustainable economy uh, in 2050, noting the, you know, the, the big changes in our in our dairy and oil and gas industry that's that's coming down our coming down our pipeline. Um, and I was reflecting on this on this topic uh, over the weekend and and. Um, I often kind of get asked this, and, and I've put a lot of thought into actually, what is the Māori economy? How do we define the Māori economy? Um, and I guess the traditional answer is, and what most people default to is, is the Māori economy is what iwi do. Uh, that's often the first conception. It, it's, it's organisations like Te Ateawa here um, in, in Taranaki and now our iwi partners, and, and that's often the first port of call, because for most people outside of Te Awa Māori, that's, that's their main knowledge of of the Māori economy. There's these large iwi businesses uh, and they're out there doing all the work. Then you've got the next layer um, of, our Māori, of our big Māori land trusts and incorporations, uh, these organisations that have been around, some of them for, for 100 years, 150 years, driving kind of economic activity off the land. Uh, then we have our Māori businesses and we have Māori in business. Um, but when I think of, I guess, the Māori economy, for me it's not so much as an as a entity separate from the New Zealand economy. Um, it is intrinsic to and, and a part of the New Zealand economy. So my whole whakaurua around this is that actually I'm not so interested in, in how big the Māori economy is, how fast it's growing. Um, what I'm really interested in is how is the economy that we all live in, work and operate in, how is that set up to work for Māori? Um, or is it set up to work against Māori? Um, how are we represented in the economy? How does the economy represent us? Uh, and that's one of the kind of the key questions I want to put to our panel today as we talk about what is our vision for the economy um, in 2050? What does Taranaki look and feel like as a region uh, and as a region that, that incorporates Māori into its economy rather than treats it as a, a standalone uh, economy over to the side, uh, which when you look across New Zealand for a long time, that's often how it's been treated, as the standalone uh, economy um, independent of or operating outside of the New Zealand economy. Um, and so I kind of want to change that, that perception, change that quarter uh, and really talk about how do we make the economy work for Māori? Uh, how do we ensure that the economy that we are creating here in Taranaki um, contributes to and results in equitable outcomes for, for our whānau uh, throughout the region um, and throughout the, the country, um, noting you know, there are large numbers of our whānau living around the country, but how do we create that economy that works for our people and, and delivers those equitable outcomes? So with that said, um, and as that kind of little... Uh, I guess little introduction to today's kōrero. Um, I'm going to quickly ask each of the panelists here to to introduce themselves, uh, and then we've got we've got a couple of questions uh, that I'm going to put to them. Um, but we want this to be interactive, so we do have a roving mic. So if there are questions that come up during the kōrero, um, please feel free to raise your hand and 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 put those questions to the panel. We'll also have an opportunity for for a Q and A uh, session towards the end. Um, but I guess I'll start here quickly with Dion, and we'll go around and just quickly let the panel introduce who they are. No doubt you know most of them. Uh, kia ora tato. I'm not sure if this is working, but <coughs> uh, ko Taranaki te maunga, uh, he uru tēnei o Taranaki whānui, ko Dion tūta tōku ingoa, uh, ko te pau whakahaere o te kotahitanga o te Ateawa, me te, ti, uh, te tiamana o Paranini hi kiwa tōtara. So kia ora whānau, my name's Dion. I work with Josh at Te Kotahi Tango o Te Atiawa, and um, I'm also the, the chair of Paranini Hikiwai Tōtara here in New Plymouth. Kia ora. Uh, tēnā rā tātou. Uh, ko te wakarua pauna me makato ko ingoa. Uh, he uri au no konei, no wanga nui hoki. Uh, my name is Te Waka, and I work for Ka Uruora, and I know heaps about the Māori economy. Kia ora tātou. <laughs> Um, great afternoon, everybody. Um, my name's Jai um, Huta from Born and Bred in Taranaki, um, New Plymouth. Um, spent a few years overseas in the, in the Goldie, um, but really chuffed to be back um, and having a positive impact um, in Taranaki. Um, so we have a small business um, called Game Changer in New Plymouth, um, just based up in Vogeltown, um, and um, we identify as a social enterprise. Um, so we look at how socially we can make an impact on little people that want to experience or participate in sport. 
uh, tēnā koutou, ko Aisha tuku ingoa. Um, but about me, I'm 17 years old. Uh, I'm head girl of Spotswood College. Um, a Scrabble enthusiast. Uh, yeah, and I'm here to give a little bit of a rangatahi perspective, or one of the uh, perspective coming from a, a rangatahi um, on the Māori economy. A tēnā tata katoa, those of you that have been here today are sick of my voice probably, and hopefully I don't lose my voice. Um, he mokopona tēnei o mā tātua waka i mihi ana ki a koutou, ingari ko taranaki uh, maunga taku korowai. Uh, taku kākahu tiaki uh, ahau. Uh, I miri wano, I am the chair of He Torona Pākehi, the Māori Business Network, um, and also I have a small small SME uh, tihi, a little events and consultancy company that I've been running for 20-something years. Um, and then I have a day job as well with the iwi, working with Na Iwi or Taranaki. So hopefully I can contribute some whakaaro from those two of those three portai um, here tonight. Kia ora, Josh. Uh, kia ora koutou. Uh, so as you can see, we've got a very kind of illustrious panel here today and people who, who work across a large portion of, of the economy here in Taranaki. Um, and I thought as, as kind of a conversation here was Taranaki 2050, um, I thought the kind of the opening remarks uh, should go to, to someone who's most likely uh, out of all of us to, to still be active in the economy in, in 2050. <laughs> um, so I thought the first question, and, 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 and all the panelists will have an opportunity to speak to this, um, but Aisha, what is your vision for uh, the Taranaki economy in 2050? To be retired by 2030. <laughs> hey. no, um, all right, my vision. Uh, I hope that Oh, I hope I do hope to see that the uh, our, the multi asset base grow. Um, I hope that uh, the multi economy does take up a larger proportion of like the Aotearoa economy. I know that like numbers aren't everything, but I think if we take up a larger proportion of the economy, the multi, uh, of the New Zealand economy, it probably shows that our people are doing are being like healthier wealthier and happier. Um, secondly, I hope that um, we're more diversified because um, when I was speaking to you and I was like, oh, what is Māori economy? You had, you know, I was like, oh, I don't know anything about this. You mentioned something about how we tend to, uh, we tend to uh, contribute to the economy through uh, farming, fisheries, sort of that stuff. <laughs> um, but I think lots of those are sunset industries. Um, and so I, but, and I think that we have, um, we're able to contribute in other ways through tourism, through fashion, as you can see earlier today. We have um, these, other, these other gifts that we can give that aren't just in these sectors that we have primarily contributed in. So I hope that we're more diversified. Um, and I hope that we, cont oh, that we continue to put the environment and people first and that profit isn't, isn't the number one because that is our unique way of going about things is that we like to put Wano and whenua first and then profit is, accompanies that. That's not at the forefront of everything. And I hope that that also influences other, bu other businesses um, to take that framework and, and yeah, use that as well. Sure. Oh, awesome. Come by. So we're done. We're all done. Cool. Um, and then, so Emily, you're, I guess, in your role with Hitoka and Parky, kind of involved a lot in, in kind of figuring out how we uh, can better support Māori businesses and enable collaboration and collectivisation throughout Virohi. What's your vision? Yeah, um, today was really powerful because I think it just reinforced what we, we, we intrinsically know. Um, and that is that it's really based on our, you know, uh, we made up, the, our Māori economy to me is that it's made up, the backbone is made up of Māori SMEs, small medium enterprises, and um, small, so those under nine people, 
and then media, small SMEs, those over. There, we're not a lot of, when I talk about Māori enterprises, I'm not talking about the, the collective trusts, land trusts or iwi um, organisations, I'm talking about the enterprises, ones like me, small little businesses that have been operating for years. And when you look at that, the stats are astounding, not just with Māori but also across um, Aotearoa. This is the backbone, this is the fabric of um, business here in Aotearoa. And I think for me, our, my aspiration for He Toruna Paki and us and our place in it is to provide a real enabling environment for that nurturing to happen. You know, not every, if, what we heard today was people made decisions based on values, far no values. It's not about profit, it's about people, it's about planet, taiao. You know, those were the choices, these values-based choices, and my aspiration is that we really bring that to the fore to show our uniqueness, and we can do that by being small SMEs as opposed to being big corporate giants, you know, and so we have to provide this enabling environment through investing, using some of our, partner, our partners, looking around around there, um, to help invest in our small SMEs, invest in our, our little businesses to help them flourish. And collectivisation, it's not all about creating one big massive company or organisation, it's about a collaboration for Nongatanga we heard a lot about today, bringing us all together to make up this kōrawai that will be the fabric, the um, fabric of the Māori economy. So that's my moimoya for us. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> Kia ora, Ian. And so, Jai, as one of the um, as SME owners, business owners, uh, here on the panel today, tonight, how does that kind of resonate with you and, and where do you see uh, our place in the economy in 2050? Um, well, to shoot forward to 2050, uh, I mean, I'm pretty uh, positive anyway, so I see the Māori economy just pumping. Um, I see our people at the forefront of, um, of leadership, um, of collab collaborative ideas coming together. Um, in terms of Taranaki, and, and when that question was asked to me, um, it's all about collaboration, um, and it's all about um, empowering people in our community, our whanau, to want to be a, become a small enterprise, to, be, to want to be part of that, uh, that energy, that, um, that education, and, that, and understand what long-term sustainability, sustainability looks like. Mm. So, yeah, excuse me, I'm a little bit nervous, actually. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it's all about collaboration. It's all about empowerment. I mean, I look around the room, and for me, I would have loved to see... Um, more rangatahi here um, to know that this was happening and to, to be a part of it and to actually see that that they can they could or, or vision that they could be here they can sit up here and, and give give their feedback on what that looks like um, I see real strength real mana real empowerment in, in taking those little people and educating them and empowering them with with uh, uh, with the mindset that they can do whatever they want to do, and that will obviously long-term impact our Māori economy. Ka pai jai. And so, I guess switching tack a little bit um, and, and passing over to, to Dion, um, you've got a, a range of roles, um, CEO of an iwi, Chair of a, the, the Land Trust. Um, there's very few parts of, I guess, the, the larger Taranaki economy that, that your mahi kind of doesn't touch on. Um, where do you see us going and what's your, your vision uh, for 2050? Yeah, I guess um, it's, it's, it's important to make the distinction. So I actually work for a trust that, rep that belongs to the iwi. So I actually work for quite a small business that is a representative entity because um, sometimes people think I work, I control the iwi, but that's a collective of people. I work for this, this, this quite a small trust actually, which just has access to a lot of resources, and it's very similar with the incorporation. But in terms of the future, where I think 
you know, 2050 and, and all of that stuff. I actually agree with these guys. I've always thought that the future of the Māori economy lies in whānau business, small, uh, small to medium whānau businesses, uh, owner-operated businesses. Um, because you have a different, you've actually got a different risk profile uh, at that level, right? So with, with the big post-settlement governance entities and the, the big Māori landing corporations, the challenge with those things, because they're multiply owned, you have issues with there around equity and you've got to treat everybody the same and all sort of stuff. The challenge we have is, is linking those which are essentially big sources of capital, and I've heard some people talking about it here. It's about how do you link that source of capital up with those who actually need it for business purposes. So I think the, the challenge for organisations like Te Kotahi Tango Te Ateawa and Paranini Hiki Waitotara, which are, and like PKW in particular, is a profit-driven kind of, it's an entity, it's a commercial business which is about making profit for its shareholders, different from an iwi-based approach, um, is... Um, trying to find the right mechanisms which actually empower its members to go out and, and uh, achieve tinoranga tiratanga in a business sense in their own in their own way, uh, but in a way where everybody gets equal access to that kind of opportunity. You know, because you've got to remember, like iwi entities like PSGs, they're political, they're sort of political entities. Uh, which with cultural responsibilities which have got business act opportunities tagged onto it. So they have an important role to play, but I don't necessarily think, and, and they, have, they have access to opportunities that individuals don't. So the key, I think, and I'm not really sure, and I don't have the answers on how this happens yet, but it is actually about linking those two things together in a, in a positive way, uh, because actually... PSGEs, landing corporations, they actually need successful oh. Māori businesses in order to deliver on the things that we want to deliver on. So, yeah, I guess the challenge is, that's what I see, is, is sort of linking up with these sort of things and participating with groups like Hiotoronga and stuff like that and not becoming a monument to yourself, mm. right? Because those, those entities can, there's a risk of those things becoming monuments to themselves and only being worried about how big their asset base is and all that sort of stuff. But I agree with your opening comments around if these things don't actually open up access to opportunity for whānau on the ground, then they're not really serving their purpose. Kia ora. Kia ora, Dion. And on that point, I guess, of, of delivery to whānau, um, te waka uh, in your role at Ka Uru Ora, um, kind of tasked by, uh, by Te Atiawa and Taranaki Iwi, um, the, the PSGs, to essentially to, to work with Alfano to build their financial literacy, to help them get ready for the housing um, that, that we're tasked with delivering. Um, what do you, I guess, what are you kind of seeing on the ground? What are you hearing? What's your vision uh, for Taranaki in 2050? Kia ora, Josh. Um, I think just what Aisha said around healthy, wealthy and happy. I think that's something that, and, and then also um, linking back to whenua and whānau, um, how do we make sure that individually each of our whānau are healthy, wealthy and happy? Because, And I do want to acknowledge all the mahi that has gone um, on in the background around Māori businesses, Māori entities. Those are have that, those that have gone before us, I do want to acknowledge them for places and spaces like this now because I think without all of their hard mahi, um, we wouldn't be where we are today. So I do want to acknowledge those that, that have gone before us um, and have had to really fight for um, the Māori economy as we see it today. Um, and so I think when we look at healthy, wealthy and happy, um, I do have the privilege of seeing... Um, a level of iwi trusts um, and, and a collective of iwi and what little they do have um, and investing into kaupapa like Ka Uru Ora where whānau can access financial literacy to actually own their money. Um, and I think that's, you know, economy is money. There's a part of that that comes money equals economy, economy equals money. And so without us as Māori understanding the true um, power of money, I think we, we aren't able to really understand what the economy looks like for us as people, as whānau. And so I think, um, for me, it looks like empowering our whānau to understand at a young age 
the power of money and what intergenerational wealth looks like, because from that, I think, moves into those wider conversations around um, yeah, the economy, what, what we can do, what as whānau we can do as a whānau collective in terms of businesses, and just empowering our whānau to own, yeah, own what they have, own the money that we all get it, we all have it. Some of us don't have as much, but we can all own it, and, and we all have the power to make it work for us as individuals, us as a whānau, and then wider with hapu anyway. So, yeah, kia ora. Kapai, thank you, Tewaka. Uh, and there was a lot of in that quarter or across the across the panelists around, uh, I guess, talking about collaboration, um, around how SMEs are, the, I guess, the future, uh, well, the present and and the future of the uh, of of the Māori economy here and here in Taranaki. Um, we're keen to kind of dive a little bit into into some of the specifics. So when we talk about collaboration. Uh, collectivisation, coming together, um, matching resources, as, as Dion mentioned. What do we need to do? Right, if we were to look at the roadmap between now and 2050, what's the next thing that we need to do that will take us towards each of your, I guess, individual and our, our kind of collective, collective visions? Um, so I guess I'll throw that over to whoever wants to start first and, and let the other one, everyone else have a bit of thinking time. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll, I'll start. Um, but I think, you know, in a real practical sense for me, we have some answers here already. So it's not like um, it's embracing what I heard today. Superpowers, our superpowers, we have those. Our unique things that we can actually draw on. So from an SME, I'm going to use two examples. Sorry, guys, not putting you in the hot seats. But um, housing, for example, we have a number of SME Māori builders and, construct, and those in the construction um, industry. You need houses built. You're doing financial literacy for whānau, which is amazing. You need that. We all need that. We need to grow ownership because ownership grows wealth and perpetuates wealth, right? And gets our whānau off the low end of the scale. So our SMEs, how can we collaborate? How can we grow consortia? How can we get them to work whakawhanaungatanga, work together to build that base of skill set, knowledge, learning, and minimise risk? Because the other thing we heard, capital is an issue. Access to funding is an issue. They've got all the, they've been doing the mahi, they know how to do it, but they don't have that extra bit that requires them to go to the next level. We have skills gaps, we have capacity <coughs> gaps to build these houses, um, and we have some potential partners with access to capital, with access to funds, not saying uh, give your cash, because we know where that belongs, but actually using that um, leveraging to be able to leverage balance sheets, that kind of stuff. So we're matching your superpowers with your superpowers with our superpowers. And we're bringing through our rangatahi and trades in terms of, you know, apprenticeships, all of that stuff. So our collective superpowers can help us amplify our, our trajectory towards a, a more vibrant 2050. Cool. You can't go quiet. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to sit it all. I well, I'll come from the like from the ground, I guess, from from schooling perspective. Um, so, oh, and I so I hope that in 2050, that like our unemployment rates and our median income rates are equal to that of all ethnic groups. That's probably what my vision, like that's what I see and what I hope for. Um, and if I look at why we don't have that currently, and I look at, at I, well, it brings me back to school, and then I think lots, lots of Māori rangatahi, they don't, they don't finish school, they don't obtain. Is it? I'm pretty sure it's over 50% of Māori rangatahi don't obtain NCA level two or higher, and so. That just shows there's a problem in the education system. Um, and we don't, Māori don't feel valued and it's not a system that works for them. So I feel like often they feel forced to just enter the workforce prematurely 
And so we enter the workforce as unskilled labour and then get lower paying jobs and our, you know, our incomes aren't as high. So I feel like, I think to, to bridge that gap, we need to, conti uh, we need to continue um, making our education system better suited to Māori. And I think that um, involves uh, using our values, obviously, um, incorporating te reo, um, encouraging whānau to be involved in their children's, uh, their children's learning and not having, I think there's a little bit of a, oh, just join the workforce, just join the workforce if school isn't working for the child. I think we need to firstly try and make school work in order for them to attain the, the certificates and uh, the qualification required to then get the skills that hopefully lead them into higher paying jobs. So that's something that I think we need to do. So it was collaboration, right? I think um, sometimes it's just um, knowing who's out there, right? So expanding on the network. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of He Toronga Pākehi because of it, the fact that it's just... Because um, there's a whole... You know, if you, if you work in the iwi space, it's a very narrow space. You don't get out much. You just hang with the same people all the time. And, and you miss out on all of the stuff that you guys do as business owners, right? Because you're actually... You're, most of you are working actually in the, the broader day-to-day -day economy. The, the iwi space, and to a certain extent, groups like the incorporations, it's, it's a bit more broader in the incorporations, but oh. the iwi space is very, um, it's quite narrow, because we're actually, apart from our commercial operations, we're actually operating in a very, in a social, or cult, cult, a social space more so than an actual business space, right? So um, part, of the th part of it, and so when I look at what we're trying to do at Te Kotahitanga, so Te Kotahitanga is not one thing, right? It's, it's like about four or five different operations, and part of it is involved in commercial stuff. But 75% of it is actually not involved in commercial stuff, but we're, we're slowly bringing that all under one banner to, to sort of basically exercise more control over that stuff so that we can actually direct where those things, uh, where we want our commercial activities to be located. But part of that is actually understanding, um, yeah, broadening out our friends base uh, so that we actually know, well, we need this. Who's there in the whānau that we can, we can actually connect with to bring in? Because we, um, uh, because we don't want to be uh, the be-all and, en and end-all of everything te atiawa. We don't have that, A, we don't have the capacity, we don't have the relationships, we don't have the network. So a lot, of, all what we are really evolving into, uh, we're building our own capacity, but we're we're building to become more of a facilitator as such, through trying to find uh, through groups like Amotai and, and through the the work that Josh is doing, around who are the Tiatiawa, you know, in the first because a, a core part of our job is, it's about sustaining Tiatiawa identity, right? That's our whole purpose. Is the reason why we had a settlement was to ensure that our identity can survive. So the first port of call whenever we're looking for mahi, obviously, is a te atiawa person, right? If we can't find a te atiawa person for that job, then it's taranaki whānui. We'd rather have one of the relations, one of the whānau do it. And then if you can't find them, any other Māori that's going to... Uh, and, and then if... Well, so long as they share a value set with us, right? And then if you can't find one of them, then maybe you go to the wider market. So we're still working through that stuff with our procurement stuff. But the key to all of that is actually um, just knowing who does what, and, and, but also knowing, well, your lane, really, what your, what your key purpose is, and then how to, how to connect up with people who can help you achieve that for an exchange of value and mana. Yeah. Um, I'll jump in. Um, so I, I guess just going back a step, I'll just let everybody know what Game Changer is exactly, just in case you don't know. Um, so Game Changer is a, so we manufacture, we design and manufacture sports uniforms, uh, corporate uniforms for teams, associations, iwi. Um, and what's important to us, um, sorry, I'll go back a step. Um, so we are 50% Māori owned, 
and 50% Pacifica owned. So um, my wife is Samoan, um, I'm, I'm Māori obviously. Um, we, have, uh, um, we have three children. Um, our, our eldest son plays for Manu Samoa Sevens. Um, our middle son's over in the Goldie, a loving life, um, but, but enjoying life, um, happiness. Um, and our baby owns Life of Chi Crystals. Um, she's 16. Um, she left school uh, because it wasn't for her. Um, and um, we encourage our children to be happy in life. Um, so she set up her business and is thriving. So, yeah, so that's, that's our whānau, my whānau. Um, in terms of collaboration and, and what does that look like for me um, as Game Changer, so we established Game Changer for a couple of reasons. Um, we moved back from the Gold Coast and we identified then five years ago that New Zealand was such a hard place to live financially. Um, if there is whānau struggling financially, then little people um, are not going to get the, any opportunity to participate in sport. Um, our family is very passionate about sport. It started with me at school. Um, I done everything that I could, um, and my Fano was one of those Fano's that that didn't have the moolahs that I could do everything. So I had other Fano um, paying for things for me to attend. Mm. I think if I can pick up on that, Jai, because that's something that came through and this leads into, if you bring it back at a smaller scale, we heard a lot of that today, where whānau wanted, had, a, had an idea, had the drive and the motivation to do it, um, because they made these values-based decisions around their families, feeding their families, looking after their whānau, but they didn't have the money, the mula. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they <coughs> borrowed it. They borrowed it from others. They borrowed it from whānau, wherever they could, to get their dream off the ground. And they made because they did that, they made sure that they never lost it, because they had to go back and live amongst, you know, live amongst them, face up to them every day, but they did it, that was their drive, so mm. I just wanted to acknowledge you, yeah, Jai, you. on that journey. Mm. Mm. No, you can pick it back up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess it comes back to um, why we set Game Changer up is purely because we wanted to support our, our youth, um, but the other thing is obviously our whānau. We wanted to empower our whānau, not just my direct children, but everybody that is part of us, um, and that is the Māori side, the Pacifica side, and how can we contribute to their daily lives. Um, so as an example, we're at a stage now where we need staff, so the first thing we do is like, right, where's all our Māoris and Pacifica designers? We need them, you know? So we're looking around, looking around. And th there is a skills shortage out there of... of the type of people that ne that we may need, mm. um, but then we try and identify how can we get someone that's beginning that journey and then mm. move them into a position where we can upskill them and we can be a part of their journey and they're part of our journey and they become part of Game Changers. So, you know, we're looking at ways of how we can <coughs> still work within our whānau and within Taranaki, and then, if not, Māori or Pacifica, you know, yeah. like, outside of Taranaki. So, um, I think collectively we can achieve more. It's that, you know, it's that whole, you know, team, you know, together everybody can achieve more, but I genuinely believe that if we are empowering our youth, we can show them that there are opportunities outside of, outside of these blinkers, outside of the current li living environment, potentially. Um, then if, if we're breeding success, then our economy is only going to be successful in the future. And that's that's what drives us. That's what gets me out of bed every day. Ka pai. Um, and as to Waka, uh, in terms of what do we do next? What's going to take us towards, or take us closer towards that vision for 2050? Yeah, I might just do um, what Jai did. In terms of Ka Uru Order, for those of you who don't know what Ka Uru Order is, it's an organisation that's been set up to by Taranaki and Te Atiawa Iwi 
um, to do three things, um, financial literacy with our whānau, and uh, number two, deliver housing opportunities for Fano with the iwi. So we don't deliver the houses, the iwi have the houses and we help to create those pathways for Fano to enter into home ownership. Um, and the third thing is Fano Saver. So similar to Kiwi Saver, just the Fano Saver version where iwi contribute to a savings scheme and investment for um, purchasing a home, uh, university studies, and then retirement. So that, that's what Kaurau is set up. So in terms of set up for, so in terms of collaboration, we really are collaborating with Iwi and Fano. Um, and so again, it's just being able to empower our Fano. And I'll speak personally because I'm a business owner. Um, I I'm, I am a contractor now to these organisations, and I also do a contract with Iwi. I think just knowing and having the confidence to step out and go. It's going to be okay. I can do this and become my own, you know, become my own business to be able to contract to organisations. And so I think just even identity with our whānau going, um, to how do you get that confidence to step out mm -hmm. and surrounding yourself with Fano and friends um, that will encourage you to step out. And again, what Emily said about other organisations, you know, like. Um, our speakers this morning or this afternoon talking about having a collective whānau around you, supporting you and encouraging you to go, just try it um, and see what happens. And so just encouraging whānau to do that. But again, to do that, you have to understand money and you have to have people around you to, to help you understand money because you need to be able to fall back on somebody or something or a kaupapa or values that uphold you in those times that, you, that it might not work. Um, yeah, And if I think, just picking up on that education, what Aisha talked about, that's a big thing. We're not talking about just the degrees and everything. It's our financial literacy. It's our understanding of things. A lot of what we heard today, the, we're very shy when it comes to money and numbers. We have to stop being shy about that. It's, that's what you have every day to feed your whānau. So you've got to understand it. You've got to understand the power of it. You've got to understand its um, bad points and also that credit, the side of credit and also balancing that wants and needs. We all, the, the world we live in at the moment is very materialistic we, and we can get fast cash, easy credit um, and we can get the things we, we can't afford we want, but we can't afford, but we can get them today through accessing bad money. You know, so we have to, we have to be educate, we have to learn to educate ourselves as tough as it might be. And we've got to start back with our young people. If our, if our vision for 2050 is to have a, a strong, vibrant Māori economy, um, it's got to start here. At the moment, we've got huge issues with um, truant, you know, kids not back at school. Um, because of COVID, you know, there's all these social issues, but we can't, we, we know that. We can't fix everything, you know. It's taken us 150 years to get back to a point where we can actually start talking about this. So I think there's a whole lot of stuff to do, and um, we have to focus on what are the positives, what can we do, and I think if we focus on our, our rangatahi, because like you said, Josh, so eloquently, some of us are not going to be here in 2050. <laughs> I was including myself in that list too. I plan on being <laughs> happily retired uh, in 30 years' time. Um, but really picking up on that theme on, on education and, and, and I guess inspiring our, our rangatahi and, and um, I think that's part of the challenge is, is we heard some really wonderful quarter today from some, some business owners and, and, and our, and, you know, our, our um, whanau who are out there who have done the hard yards, who are building these businesses. So how do we get them in front of Arangatahi, how do we use them, use their superpowers to inspire um, the, the next generation to, to kind of come through? Um, I want to switch tack a little bit and, and kind of go back up towards, uh, I guess, the, the regional strategy. Um, so if we look towards 2050 um, and the vision that came out of the, the strategic work over the last couple of years that Venture Taranaki um, has been a part of, um, was is building towards this vision of Taranaki as a high value low emissions economy built on inclusivity and sustainability. Um, and Aisha, in your opening remarks, uh, you mentioned um, these sunset industries, um, our oil, our gas, our dairy, um, 
these kind of industries that have sustained Taranaki for, for a long time. Um, but I think, as you rightly note, are, are kind of industries which are um, certainly, if not on the decline, are on, on the way out and, and, and don't kind of form a huge part of kind of our strategy going forward. Um, where do you see... Um, and, and this is for, I guess, for the panel as a whole, and, and um, probably in particular to Dion, uh, the particular challenge you have with Paranini Ki Waitotara mm -hmm. um, in this, in terms of the diversification of the, of the Taranaki economy, and, and what are those industries? So what does, what does our industry look like in 2050? What are we invested in? What, are we, what types of businesses are we owning? Um, what kind of economic activity are we driving out of Taranaki? Well, I think... Tourism. I think tourism will be a big thing. Um, Taranaki is beautiful, and um, I know I'm going to struggle when I go tra travelling when I'm older because I don't think I'll ever be able to find a place as beautiful as Taranaki. Um, but so so we have so we have you know we have the sea here. We have the Maunga. It already brings in lots of money. Um, I think there is uh, opportunity for uh, I'm going to come back to iwi and stuff because they for the, for the people for the Maori entities who have money, I think there is opportunity for them to be able to um, expand. Um, we have our we have our maunga and I would hate to say that we should use it for economic benefits. We are responsible for keeping uh, for keeping the maunga. Uh, healthy, well, and um, but I think if if we do see opportunity there, it's okay to take it as long as we do it with sustainability in mind. Other industries that I think I think well, actually not not all Maori are actually interested in these industries that we have primarily relied on fishery. You know, we can see with my uncle Uncle Bobby. He loves fashion. That's not uh, very different to fishing and forestry. Um, <laughs> but if we can, um, if we are able to invest in in our in rangatahi um, and give them opportunity, that they are able to explore their own interests and actually able to enter into different industries. Um, and then expand from there, so whatever that may be. If they don't have these opportunities to um, to look into, you know, give an opportunity to give other, other things a go, then they will be like, oh, yeah, I have to just, you know, get into these industries that, they, that we have already been in. So I, don't, I wouldn't really, I can't pinpoint an industry exactly, tourism, but yeah, I think also just giving Māori um, the ability to have options and then expand on their own interests, and then from there, um, that's where they, that, that's the sector that they'll get into, and then that becomes something that contributes to the Māori economy. So yeah, that's probably yeah. the best way that I can put it. Mm, awesome. So you, the future, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, from a land, from, you know, from a primary industry sort of perspective, um, you don't have to be a genius to see that the the primary sector is already under massive uh, potential change because of changing regulation. Right? You have societal societal expectations around land use are changing. So, you know, there's a question mark over, uh, and with that comes uh, impacts potentially on profitability of those actual businesses. Um, but you know, when you talk about a sunset industry, whether it's today, whether it's 50 years from now, 100 years from now, human beings are going to have to eat, right? So there's going to be so that I'd say the land use may change, but food production in some form will still play a role in our in our system of of existence, right? Now whether that's in a lab. Or whether that's on a on on a in a field, um, the key thing will be however you do it, it's going to have to be done in a way that is environmentally sustainable and socially acceptable. I mean, I have a background in fishing as well, and and fishing as a industry is under a huge amount of um, social pressure, not because actually 
uh, people don't like eating fish, but what they don't like is the thought of a, a net catching a dolphin. Right? So there's huge um, societal pressures on a range of industries. Uh, so, so what Paraninihi Kiwai Tōtara has been doing, for instance, is um, just looking at alternative land uses. So, you know, there's a question, not a question mark, but dairy, bovine dairy, for instance, cows. Um, we're, we're doing pilots on ovine dairy, so sheep dairy. So uh, improved, potentially improved uh, financial returns and improved economic, um, environmental impacts. We're also looking at um, high-value nutrition using uh, plant-based proteins and things like that as well. But those are, those are actually really, well, the, the, the ovine dairy one isn't, but the, the plant-based stuff is really, really high risk. You know, it's early stage stuff. You know, we're investing a certain amount of money into it. And then you look over offshore at a, com at a company like Nestle or something, which is investing $14 billion into that sort of stuff. So there's no way you can compete with that. So, you know, you might just, from an organisational perspective, you might look at that as being a, a fast follower or an early adopter once it's once somebody else has has, um, has um, sort of proven that out. Uh, but but I guess one of the things, and I didn't touch on this earlier, but nobody wants to milk cows at three o'clock in the morning. Right, it's um, it's it's not an attractive kind of um, career. I'm sure the cows don't. Want yeah, <laughs> it's not an attractive career for a young person unless they come from a from a uh, a background on the whenua, right? So a challenge that we often have is like, oh, how do we get our people back on the farm? Well, my the thing in my mind is, do we want to get our people back on the farm? You know, I mean, the the or, or would they be better putting them into like um, I don't know, like energy transition, you know? So we're shifting away from oil and gas, we're moving to sort of uh, things like uh, alternative energy, wind power, wave power, all of those sort of things. Higher, you know, where, where perhaps through an engineering career, they might get a better, uh, they might have more opportunity doing that. I think farming traditionally was a pathway to farm ownership, and the economics of that have changed to such an extent that that pathway for success is closed off, right? So in addition to regulatory and environmental change, you're getting economic changes which are actually closing off pathways to the rewards that those things once upon a time delivered. And so for those, that, for those individuals that still want to do those things, open arms, come and see us. But the, the attraction of those, those things is not as, as, they're not as attractive to, to whānau as it once was. So we're trying to figure out, okay, well, I mean, once upon a time when I was running PKW, I went and had a look at a robot farm. Not, it didn't farm robots. It had, you know, it had <laughs> robots that milk cows. And, um, you know, we were looking at thinking, like, well, maybe, maybe you know, that might be a more attractive thing. The cows basically just came in, and the farmer was this, like, basically a technician who looked after robots. It was, it was quite an amazing farm, quite an amazing thing. Didn't suit our, our model. So... It's, it's really around evolving. There's the core activity of what we're going to be doing, but the, the role around that thing, how that's going to evolve to make it more attractive to, to somebody who will want to work in that industry over time as well. Yeah, and I, th I think it's going away from the ownership of bricks and mortars. Yeah. You know, we get so fixated on these things that we've got to have tangible things. So I was thinking about the, um, you know, like the new technologies, digital um, creative industries, where will those places take us without having to have the ownership of these bricks and mortar things? And, um, you know, that's where I think 2050, there'll be things that we don't even know about that exactly. will be in 20, probably 2025, let alone 2050. Um, but also the sharing, the sharing economy, um, that goes back to we don't have to own everything. We could all be a part of something if we let, you know, if someone's working to our superpowers again, who's going to take, if we all put, lock these blocks together, we could actually come up with something that, sh that we can share and create um, wealth and growth from, rather than one person owning that whole thing. So I think that's something that I'd really like to see in terms of where we go um, as we make a move towards 2050. I mean, Uber, who would have thought Airbnb, all of those are sharing economy examples.
Any additional thoughts, Jay? Anything to share? Um, I definitely think in for Taranaki that tourism is big for Taranaki in the future. Um, I think there's a big space there that, that is untapped here in Taranaki. Um, you look at um, Rotorua and what they've, what they've achieved, um, I, I can't see why we can't enter in a spa into a space like that. Um, Taranaki's becoming a destination for a lot of people. Um, people are coming here and, and doing their work from here and head offices in Auckland. Um, you know, so it's, um, I, I think it's an untapped market. Um, I, I do think that in terms of um, the conversation around the sports hub, um, I do see that as, as a benefit to the community long term. Um, if it's done correctly, um, and, and, and I, I believe that my perception only is that money needs to be invested for people to come. So in terms of what's being proposed now, it's too small. You've got to think bigger. We have to think bigger if we, if we want to have tourism, if we want to have a hub that can accommodate for, um, to give you an example, uh, go big and have um, accommodation there, have cafes there, have a, a game changer shop there, um, have, uh, yeah, you know, have uh, have physiotherapists, have have a whole hub where people can actually come. Like, um, look at the Super Rugby final in Auckland, in Auckland over the weekend; it was sold out. That's what we need to be catering for. Um, we, we need to go big and, and you know think about musicians, um, the opportunities to have. Um, not just sport, the sporting facility, but everything that um, is inclusive in a community. Um, imagine having, oh, you, you know, it could be huge. Um, and, and, I, and I think that we need to invest um, into getting that right, and we need to spend, spend more on that to get it done correctly. That, that's my thoughts. Um, but yeah, I'd quite happily have a game changer short, uh, shot there. Sure. Cool. Yeah, I think having shared, um, you know, I, I look at somewhere like um, Johnson Corner and what the power could be in having Māori spaces like that, where, like Jai said, all of us being able to have an office or boardrooms all in the same space, um, that would be something that I'd love to see collectively we work towards, something like that. Um, Kaurirua will join um, you guys um, when you <laughs> in that space. Um, and also just, again, because I work in the housing um, sector, I think just seeing Airbnb, more Airbnbs, but again, to get that, you need a whare and you need whenua. And so just having, you know, what does it look like? Like my dream on a small scale is that me and my brothers all own our whare, own a whare and then, you know, go wider that my hapu own whenua and whare, and then go wider again, because the, in, in owning whenua and whare mean equals so much more than just mm. whenua and whare. It means healthy, it means wealthy, it means so many other things. And so um, I think my dream in, you know, all those years would be to make sure that my responsibility as a sister, as an auntie, um, as a queer eventually would be and maybe a mother, you know, is to make sure that my whānau are set up well to be able to continu continue that legacy. Mm. Yeah. Kia ora, Chihuahua. Um, and just reflecting on, on all those answers, it's great. I've got copious amounts of notes <laughs> here, um, which is good. I've got a, 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 a um, panel of five doing, doing my mahi for me um, <laughs> and shaping up my work program, which is awesome. But lots of, like... In terms of themes that are coming through, it's loud and clear. It's like we kind of we need that infrastructure there to to succeed, um, and the infrastructure, yeah, to your point, it needs to be big enough to actually attract people, um, attract business, and drive activity in in the region. Um, but I think just saying that attraction, I think we've got that attraction already. Like Taranaki is beautiful, it's stunning. It's you know we're blessed to have a massive. Um, Maunga sitting right there, and then the, the sea is right there. Um, when we were living in Australia. I'd open the curtains to look out for Taranaki and be like, oh, that's right, I'm not, I'm not here. You know, like it's, um, Taranaki is stunning. We're, we're lucky. Um, we just need to um, make big decisions and make big and bold decisions to, to, to grow. I think one of the things we heard today was be intentional, really clear and intentional mm -hmm. about where we're going to put our money mm -hmm. and our energy. Sometimes we're very 
muddy about what we want to do, you know, no matter what, what whether it's Te Toro on a Pākehi or Iwi or whoever, we're not clear. And so my wero to us as a rohe is to be really clear about what it is we want to put our energy into, what we want to spend our money. Sometimes we try and do everything and we don't pull it off very well. If we could focus on what is that thing we want to be and, and we all start to contribute mm. in our own way to make that our superpower, you know? Yeah. Mm. And I think the important thing there too is being <clears throat> open to other people's feedback. You know, it's not necessarily, oh, hey, bro, I don't like you. This is my idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like it's, um, it's like, oh, yeah, that's an awesome idea. Let's let's be collaborative. And hey, this, what about this? And then what about that? And then all together, as a as a Fano, we've come up with, um, with an amazing concept that is actually going to be beneficial to a lot more people than, than what we actually think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I also think that. Um, we should not. We should be more open to um, interacting with maybe non Maori um, oh, right. yeah. businesses and that because in order to in order to build this infrastructure, we need money, and I don't think uh, to go to the extent that we want to. I don't think that we alone have that money yet, and so if we're able to um, mm -hmm. interact with these people who do have money, um, <laughs> then I think, I, think, I think that would be um, really beneficial, and it's, obviously, it's obvious why, why we have distrust in some people, um, but I think if we, if we stay open-minded, because we don't just want to be like shutting off these people who are able to help us, basically. So I guess um, staying vigilant, but receptive. So, yeah. Can I just support that? She's uh, absolutely right. Like, we are still a tiny part of the overall economy. The, 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 um, the, the opportunities out there, but it's got to be based on trusted relationships with the right people. Um, so, like, the energy transition work that is going on and shifting away from oil and gas, we've had a bad experience with the oil and gas sector. So learn from that and apply that learning to the transition to the new energy economy. Don't use a bad experience previously to cut yourself off from positive opportunity into the future, but know what you stand for, right, and know who you are, because you're allowed to say no, right, um, and have confidence in who you are. I think is the uh, is the the thing that I've always talked about with our whanau. is like you know we have a we have a right to be here. We have opportunity. We can participate. Um, just because it's new, you don't have to be afraid of it. You can engage with it, but you can always say, "No, nah, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not. I'm not going down that path." Yeah, yeah I think you know we need papa. We need relationships, and we need friends. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Me. Ambassadors for each other, right? Yeah. And I think that's like what you touched on there, Aisha, is a really, really important point and, and probably the most crucial point for us to think about as we look to yeah, how do we grow the economy? How do we grow how do we grow our share of the economy? Um, and it's yeah, as Dion said, as you said, it's by partnering, it's by partnering with the right people. Um, and we often talked about this at um, when I was at New Zealand Trade and Enterprises that you know, we're never going to get rich selling to ourselves. Um, you're just kind of circulating the money within each other, right? It's it's finding those those people outside, um, um, be it in New Zealand or around the world, um, who share our values and, and are keen to kind of partner. And, and there are some really good examples of that kind of collaboration happening. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, through... Actually, we've seen it in the dairy industry. Uh, we've seen it in the fishing industry, uh, where kind of that the international kind of companies they bring the money, they bring the resources, but they bring the values and they bring those shared values. Uh, and I guess that's something for us as as, as Taranaki uh, to decide. I guess what are our values and and what who are we willing to I guess partner with and, and share um, share those with. 
as they look to grow. So I've got one final question um, before we throw it open to the, the floor um, uh, for, for questions from, from everyone else out there. Um, and, and so they've been prepared, they've prepared, uh, they've prepared for these questions. They haven't prepared for yours. So feel free to kind of come up with something, um, put them on the spot, get some, get some kōrero going. Um, but, and, and you kind of touched on this a little bit, Em, in your last, last comment um, around kind of what are the enablers uh, that, we is, that we need, essentially, the region uh, and those responsible for delivering the economic strategy, so, you know, of which means that Taranaki is one of those entities. Um, and we've spoken a bit tonight about access to capital, about de-risking uh, activities, about um, finding <laughs> Rangatahi um, to grow and develop into our, into our business. But what is, the, what is the one key enabler that each of you think that, that we as a region need to, uh, I guess, create or put in place or, or pave the way for, for Māori business, Māori businesses to, to succeed and prosper? Mm. Oh, for me, it's you need access to capital and funding. So, you know, we're not asking for massive amounts of money. Sorry, speaking on behalf of all of you SMEs out there, <coughs> but just some access to some capital and funding to help enable and support those that want to drive get into business, but also take their business to the next steps um, so that we can help fill mm -hmm. some of that um, lower, uh, you know, um, uh, hotel, raise, the, raise our earnings. Yeah, just to um, yeah, expand on that, I think um, capital for us is, is massive um, for, for our business. Um, I think we've, um, personally, I think we've reached a tipping point um, in our business. We've, we've, we opened in COVID. Uh, we opened our store. We were operating before at home in the shed, in the shed like Apple. Um, we started at home, and then we decided to open a shop after the first lockdown. So we opened the shop. So we've only known COVID, um, and, how, and our business has grown um, very well in the last couple of months. Um, the coolest thing about us is that we reach um, New Zealand, Australia. We can drop ship anywhere in the world. Um, so um, we can design for anybody and deliver for anybody in the world. However, our focus is, is New Zealand and Samoa um, and Australia. And No, just joking. Um, so, yeah, so we're at the tipping point now where if we had, a, had capital injection, we could open another store in Christchurch. We could invest in staff so I wouldn't be doing the logistics, the, des the design, the, um, the ABC, you know, like that type of thing. So we're truly grateful with everybody's support so far in our journey. Um, we have grown organically um, and we've been able to sustainably run our business. Um, but in terms of long-term health, you cannot sustain working 100 hours a week. Um, you know, yeah, so I think, I think capital, um, I think people um, is very important. It's great people, it's like-minded people, it's driven people, it's passionate people, people that want to make a, con a contribution to their community. Um, it's people that, that love, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's those kind of barriers. I think for me and my business, um, you come into my business tomorrow, and I, you know, it's, there's trust there, there's love there, um, and I want people to be a part of that and share that journey with us and our whanau. Yeah. One, the one thing, um, I was, I mean, apart from capital, I think one of the key things is the right relationships um, with value sets, but but there's also a depending on what level you're at. Um, courage to take a punt, right? whether that's to go out on your own or whether that's to invest in somebody else. Um, the challenge with that in some organisations is the, um, it links back to a fear of failure. Right? There, um, so there, there's a, we need a certain level of uh, the ability to, to take the risk and not, um, and if it doesn't work out, not beat ourselves up so much that we don't ever do it again. Because I've seen examples of that, where people have taken risk, it's failed, and then people have just been so gun shy that they don't go back again. So it's, I guess, it's um, 
so for the bigger organizations is actually them understanding their risk profile around that stuff and how they translate that into you know access to capital for our whanau who might need it uh, but the the again because they're politically driven entities seeing the 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 businesses showing the return you know um, and, and, and then, but using that as a way of inspiring other whānau to think, well, they've done it, I could do that too. So yeah, there's, there's win-wins in it. I just totally recall what's been said. I think another practical thing we can all do is to make sure that we are, are purchasing things from Māori-owned businesses, you know? Does it mean that you have to change your hairdresser? Does it mean that you buy Māori-owned kākahu? Um, does it mean that you have to dig a little bit deeper looking into... Because that, you know, by us supporting Māori businesses like that enables them to be more of who they are and to continue doing their mahi, so... Yeah, I support everything that said, funding, um, obviously purchasing from Māori businesses. Um, one other thing is, starting from, starting from the bottom, is making sure that people... Um, are in a position where they're, with, well, mainly, mainly children, are in homes where they are loved, where they're cared for, and where they're fed, because that means that they have the confidence to become people who can be positive contributors to the society. If you have nothing, you can't really give anything. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, Fano. Uh, part time, I. Um, Lauren over here has a has a microphone. Um, so if you've got any any questions for the panel, yep, right at the back. <laughs> here he is. Here he is. Here he is. <laughs> Who keeps Danny? <laughs> oh, no mic. No question. He doesn't. Two, one, two, three. Oh, good afternoon, Fano. Danny Moyhu from T News. Uh, I have three questions. Three questions. The first question is specifically to Te Waka in general. The second question is to Emily and uh, Dion. And the third question is to our program uh, My question to Joy and Te Waka is I love the fact that there's a social responsibility. And Joy, I love your mahi in that space when you came back and you shared your values and principles on your business. Now, I think that's a very powerful example of also giving back. What I'd like to hear from both you and Tewaka is, um, can you share with us a positive story of your contribution to um, Apano or Arangatahi um, that helped them on their journey? I'll start with you, Joy, and then follow up with you, Tewaka. Um, yeah, well, there's, there's many inspirational stories I could share, and it's, it's a pretty special um, moment when you have um, a young teenage person crying in front of you because you've gifted them something like a pair of uh, rugby boots or basketball boots. Um, it's pretty epic. Um, the, the first person that we contributed to, so we don't give Fano cash. Um, we give Fano um, uh, footwear, uh, tennis rackets, cricket boots, um, petrol vouchers, so that can be used for their for their sporting um, involvement. So we basically contributed to a young person who got selected into a um, into a, a regional team. Um, he happened to be at our home a couple of nights before leaving for this event, um, and there was just something off with him. Um, and I said to him, um, hey, man, what's happening? Um, are, are you OK? And he, and he was, oh, we were sitting there at, at the table, and he said, oh, I don't think I can go along to this tournament. Um, and I was like, oh, what, what, what's happening? What's going on? You know, is everything OK? Um, and, and after a long conversation, long story short, he said, look, we just don't have the funds to get there. I said, oh, OK. And Game Changer was very in its infancy stages then, so... Um, with anybody that now approaches us for funding um, or for, for assistance, it generally comes through a network of principals and um, coaches and, and that we connect with. Um, and so, yeah, so he said, hey, I, I don't think I can go. Mum pretty much, you know, doesn't have the funds to, to get there. I said, okay, let me talk to, talk to 
someone and I'll come back to you. Um, so I went into the room, walked back out 10 minutes later, and I said, oh, oh, hey, man, I've got your sponsor. And he was like, oh, okay. Um, and, he, and I said, but there's, there's a couple of conditions. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, well, what's the conditions? And I said, um, when you leave here to represent the team that you're playing for, um, you know, you're representing your whanau, so you go there and you do the best, the, everything that you can um, to the best of your ability to represent you and your whanau and your whanau name. He was like, oh, yeah, mean. Okay. Is that it? I was like, yep. He was like, oh, oosh. He was like, Who, who's the sponsor? And I said, oh, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that, but I'll, I'll fill you in when you get back after your tournament. And he goes, oh, yep, sweet as. So they head away to the tournament, and this young person played so well at the tournament um, that he actually got a trial with the Auckland Warriors um, after that tournament. Um, so basically, if he did not have that opportunity to go and participate at, at that level, he wouldn't have been able to go forward and represent Tabnaki and his whānau in a trial with the Warriors. So he's now overseas, and he's playing um, in a division just below... NRL, I believe. Um, so he's very close at that, again, at that tipping point to, to break into the NRL. Um, so I believe that with that opportunity, um, we were able to inspire him and give him an opportunity to go out there, represent himself well, um, and give it a good crack. So, yeah. Kia ora, Dini. Um, we have many stories like Jai, but I think... Um the little ones cutting up credit cards, um, deleting your afterpay. You know, those types of things are success stories for us. Um, and then a recent whanau, there's a whanau that's about to move into a whare in Okato. Um, again, had to pay off debt, had to close the afterpays and zip accounts. Hands up, who's got afterpay? No, it's okay, you don't need to put your hand up. Um, and... Yeah, and then all the way through to the bank, we get there, the bank says, no, nah, we're only going to give you this amount, they need more. Um, I, we ask the questions, why is the bank not giving this particular whanau more money? We know that they can afford to get more money in a mortgage, so we go back, so on, so ka order, we go back to the bank, challenge, 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 we get more money, we go back to the whanau saying, you know, well done, um, we haven't got the whare yet, but the bank have approved of this amount of money, um, let's go to the next step, and so you'll hear about it soon, but there's another two whanau that will go into whare because of the mahi that we've done, and they've done, not just us. They've done the first steps, they've signed up to the course, um, they've cut up their credit cards and they've got no debt. So that's just one of many successful stories that Kaurora have started with. There'll be many more. So have this in 10 years and we'll have that times so many more stories. So, yeah. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Can you have a Dan Thurston Crow, Toko Ingoa. Um, this is amazing. Thank you so much for um, putting this on. Um, the, I've got two things. One's a comment, actually, before the question. But um, I just, I, I love Denny's question. And I thought it was going to go in a different direction, which, which what really was around mentorship, because... Mm. When you all talked about what makes a difference, I see, <laughs> I see five people capable of lifting everyone up. And, um, and I think mentorship, I'm, I'm part of Startup Taranaki and, um, and I'm aware of what it takes to get up and running in business. And I think there's so much richness in this room around, you know, that, that's, that's able to lift people up onto a journey. And, you know, you talked about fear of failure. Um, but I think that's diminished so much when you've got someone that you can, that you can go to and, and rely on. So, um, yeah, I, there's, there's something in me that just really wants to encourage you to, you know, like to, <laughs> to, to be that for, um, for everyone. Um, the question... Um, because I'm also wearing a sustainable Taranaki hat today, I wear a few hats, um, is when we're talking about 2050, I'm, I'm just really curious about um, where, 
where we are as a society right now and where we're going. And, and when we talk, there is, there is so much um, economic potential for all of us and for Māori. Um, I'm also really curious about what the planet can sustain. And, you know, and, and, and I, you know, when I think of um, Te Taio and, um, like, I, I, <laughs> I defer to Kaitiakitanga um, in terms of what we're actually capable of doing. And I'm just really curious. A, a, a term came up for me um, just in the last couple of days, which is an economy of enough. And I'm just really curious to know how you all see the balance between, between growth and development and actually that, that stewardship of our, of our resources in the whenua and, and everything in it. <laughs> actually, that's a really, really hard question. That's a tough one. Because I think um, it's going to require quite fundamental um, changes, right? Because, like, I mean, when you're poor hunter and you see somebody with a phone or something, you know, or something, you don't look at that and say, I don't want one of those, right? So human beings are not designed to devolve. You know, when we've had, um, when you get used to a, a convenience, you don't say, I don't want a car anymore. I want to go back to a horse and cat. That that's just not on the cards, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> unless you're, yeah, you know, unless you're Amish or something. But, um, but the, yeah, I don't actually know the answer to that question. You, it's it's a serious one, like in terms of the what can it sustain? Because um, it sort of speaks to the values that I think the. I don't know what the answer is, but it sort of speaks to this question around the values that that have evolved, and you see it, you see it in things like homelessness, right? Where once upon a time a house was something that you lived in and you raised a family in, and it gave you a, a certain level of security, and you could go out and you know you'd have you'd raise kids in it, and they'd go out and have an opportunity. But somewhere along the line uh, in New Zealand history, a house turned from being something that you live in. You might see this all the time, or the mahi you do but it stopped being something that you live in and it turned into this economic commodity which people invested in to just make money. You know? so, the, so somewhere along that line, our value set as a nation changed uh, where we became more selfish. Right? And unless, unless there's some sort of, unless we figure out how to sort that out, and, and maybe it coincides with the 84 reforms when user pays comes in and, and you know, we, 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 we swing far more to the right and it's, and it's like a, and the individual counts more than everybody else, I don't know. But unless we figure out some way of sort of getting back to, you know, caring about the neighbour a little bit more, um, you, you, you run the risk of actually, well, we run the risk of sort of just going, continuing down that sort of consumerist, materialistic kind of view. And there'll always be some, mm. so we're always going to have some of that. Now, after I've waxed lyrical and philosophical like that, I don't actually have an answer to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think for me, it's, it's, it was things like we've become very transactional in the way that we engage with, with our world. And we've become very extractive. Everything's got to be extracted to get the best out of it. And we squeeze the living life out of things instead of going, actually, we only need to take this much. We go, actually, we need to take that, 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 and that. And so it's going to take a whole mindset change and culture change. And that's not easy, you know, mm. um, because you're trying to do profit. So it's got to mix, instead of profit first, it's people, planet, people, profit, which is talked a lot in the business world, but it's not actually practised. We have to change our practices and our mindsets, I think, which is not, is not yet challenging. Yeah. So I don't have an exact answer of how we might do that. But I think the more that and get involved in So Sustainable Tanaki, you're a movement. We all need to start to all work together. Again, that's all of this knitting together with, with, our, with as people of the whenua, mana whenua, kaitiakitanga, sustainable taranaki. The more of us that are doing it, the louder the, um, our voices get. Yeah. In terms of the uniform clothing sector, I mean, 
Shucks. You know, like, where do you start? Um, in term, for us, it's almost simple. Uh, we utilise fabrics such as recycled from plastic bottles. Um, you know, Adidas is a leader in that, in that at the moment. Um, so we have the facility where we can manufacture using a fabric that is manufactured and, um, sorry, that is woven in plastic bottles. Yeah, so we can actually do that now. Um, we do offer that as part of, as part of our offering. So as part of our consultation in terms of the design, the fabric, the makeup, the style, the flavour, the colour, um, that's part of that, of that selection process that the customer can choose. And I think it's us as consumers making that choice mm. is the big shift that needs to happen. So like Proof and Stock with their coffee, they use the Tetra Pak, um, well, I'm talking to the converted, but using that to, to help make an alternative to jib. So it's it's those kind of practices that we find that we need to actually lift. Mm. Yeah, and there's a, um, I think there's a level of system change that's required, and I guess so to your question, you know, how much is, well, you know, how much is too much? You know, personally, I think we're past that point, mm. right, in terms of what uh, the, the planet can bear, um, and we see that played out across sectors and across countries and, and with all the waste that's generated and everything else that we're pumping into the environment. Um, and, and so it's, yeah, what do we need to do, and, and is our, you know, is recycling and, and reusing or, or better materials enough, or do we need to fundamentally rethink um, how we structure our whole, whole economy. I saw a really good, a really interesting kind of thought-provoking piece, uh, or a little comment, a tweet last week, where someone said, look, the, the EV uh, vehicle is not here to solve climate change. It's here to save the car industry, <laughs> right? Um, is it a fundamental change to, to, you know, for what we need to do in order to protect our planet? Yes. Or is it actually a way of protecting a, a, a legacy industry? Um, and these are some of the, the re very real questions that we need to kind of grapple with as we as we move forward into the future. Um, uh, so we have um, thank you very much for all your inspiration and um, ideas. I think we do really need a mindset change and we can do it. What is the point of difference is that we are different because we look at the world differently. We look at it through principles and vision. Um, that, is our, that is our dollar. Let's create our bank of knowledge. I actually thought it was a bank of dollars but it's a bank of knowledge, because with everybody comes money. There is no shortage of money in the world. There's a shortage of housing. What are people saying? We want a papa kainga. So that whole mindset of individual ownership is now going back to collective ownership. We've got to move with what we know, how we know it, because it's been handed down through generations. So we need to consciously make a mindset change. And it's all in the land, because that's where we live. We live on the land. I just, I've been, my name's Angela, and I've been onboarding Māori businesses onto a, like a directory. It's called Hokohoko Māori, yeah. Um, and the biggest challenge that we have as Māori is exactly what you said with mindset, but it's actually with technology, and it's actually that, Technology is an enabler, and we need to stop thinking that we can't do it and actually start doing it. Like, it's just, like, there hasn't been much talk about. Sorry, I'm getting all worked up. Um, <laughs> by the way, Jai, my son's going to Australia this year for football. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, yeah, the biggest, like, if you have a mobile phone, you actually have the whole world, you know, we should all be working together, instead of competing against each other, we should all actually work together and like compete against the rest of the world because that's like, it is our superpower. Like, if you look at everything Māori, like, you know, kaho, you know, just so much stuff is blowing up around the world, but we're not working together. It's like collaboration that needs to happen. And with digital technology, it can actually help people like spend less time doing admin and you know, especially with climate change and stuff, so much time is wasted, you know, doing paperwork and all that kind of stuff. If that time was actually spent, like, automated, then you could actually spend your time doing whatever it is you need to do. And I also think that, like, our answers with um, 
with Māori, like, it's, it's our knowledge from our past, and that's, like, with the environment and stuff, like, that's the stuff that we should be sharing and spreading with everyone, and there are actually quite a few people doing it, but nobody knows about it, because, you know. But my question is, like, what is the iwi's digital strategy, like, or is there a digital strategy, like, because that is, seriously, so many people, when I, I have to step everything through them for setting up a Stripe account, getting content, mm -hmm. all the stuff that would take forever just to get one website set up, one Facebook page, one like bank account linked to a Stripe account, if we could actually help people with all of that stuff, you know, if once you've got a website set up, it's got good content, you know how to do the marketing, all that kind of stuff, you you literally got the world, you know, on your phone. But yeah, I'm just wondering, like, what is the iwi's like strategy or Taranaki's strategy with supporting businesses to do that? So the organisations that I work for, work with and for, um, we we use, so we have our own digital strategies around how, uh, so we use the appropriate digital tool to enable whatever it is our business objective is, right? So we're not, so for instance, we don't go out and advise other um, Māori businesses around what tool to use and things like that, right? But I could completely agree with you, right, that, um, uh, and, and I think you are beginning to see uh, an, an uplift and uptake in terms of Māori adoption of digital tech, right? Um, but in terms of telling, but, we, but we're not promoting that as such for other people to do because that's, that's their business decision to make for themselves, if, if you know what I mean, right? Yeah, but what we are doing, so from a, from a Te Atiawa perspective, we have our own, our central database, our central data tech hub, and we, within Te Atiawa, we have eight hapu. Uh, we essentially offer that up for all of the hapu to use collectively so that they're not having to duplicate what we're already doing centrally, you know? So we have, but at the same time, because we don't tell our hapu what to do, uh, it's up to them to respond as to whether they want to use that service or, or however they want to do it. Um, because it's, it can be a political issue uh, within the, the iwi space collectively. So, one of the bits of work that Josh is working on for Te Kotahitanga actually is to, because as an organisation, we're only six years old and we're still growing and, and we're basically rebuilding our foundations. So we're actually doing a bit of a review in, in terms of what are the, do we actually have the right, and we've just refreshed our strategy, our five-year strategy, and trying to understand, well, what are the right, now we're to that point now where we're looking at, where we've refined our core business and what we're targeting and what we're going to be doing. <laughs> And now it's a case of actually understanding, well, do we actually have the right tools? Well, you know, first stage one is have we got the right people to deliver that? And now have we actually armed them with the right tools to do that stuff? And, uh, and the answer to that is no, actually, in terms of we could be doing a lot more, uh, we could be using our, our tech a lot smarter, uh, just internally within, our, within terms of our own business. Yeah. And, and probably if I can just pick up on that, so there's eight iwi in Taranaki, so na iwi or Taranaki, each with their own strategy, but what we are trying to do as na iwi or Taranaki is improve that and come up with a collective data strategy, technology strategy, so that we can be more efficient, yep. we can actually capture data, we, can actually, we actually know what technology we need for what purpose. So I think these, we could also run the risk of getting what's cool and what everyone else is using without knowing why we need it and what its job is and what its function is and what we want out of it. So that's been a huge journey for us. And we're about to embark on that. But that, that's iwi land, iwi, iwi land. And then you've got Māori, enterprise land, which again comes back to each individual enterprise, as Dion said, and we would love for you to be there today to have that all because that was quite a lot of the conversations that came out at Hitorona Pākehi today with all of our, our kōrero and, and our, <laughs> our kaupapa, um, and we're ongoing, so your skills and what you've got to offer sounds like it's really valuable, could be a value, you know, huge value to our network, so no mai. How do I? Yeah, and, and Danny, it's the council too. It's all about communication. 
<laughs> Council, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Cool. Well, kia ora whanau. Uh, we've, we've come to the, uh, I guess, the close of our... Uh, our session tonight, um, and firstly a big thank you to, to the panelists, including uh, my boss who I called up at the last minute uh, to, <laughs> to um, sit in uh, with us today. Um, and I think you agree we've got you know, a, lot of, a lot of value, a lot of kind of uh, really valuable insights and, and, and some really good kind of directions uh, for us to take forward. So um, if you want to join me in, in showing our appreciation uh, for the panel. <laughs> And, and as a token of appreciation from uh, Te Puna Umanga, from Venture Taranaki, uh, we have a, a small uh, koha uh, for each of you from our friends at the uh, Turamatia uh, Taranaki Collective. Oh, kia, ora. kia ora. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So thank you, everyone, again for, for coming along tonight and for those of you who have been here uh, since, since midday. Uh, good job. Um, it's, been a, it's been a long day, but it's been one full of uh, very insightful, insightful kōrero uh, throughout, throughout the day. Um, one last little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you've got your, um, your name tags here, please leave them on the table uh, as, you, as you go. Venture Taranaki will recycle and reuse the, um, the clips um, at subsequent <laughs> events, so we don't have to keep buying new ones. Well, um, sustainability, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, repurpose, recycle. Yeah. Reuse, yes. Uh, and so just, uh, just as we finish, um, I will uh, bring our, our proceedings to close here tonight with a, a karakia. <laughs> Whakataka te au ki te uru, whakataka te au ki te tonga, ki a mā kina kina ki uta, ki a mā tāra tāra ki tai. E hi aki ana te ata kura, he tio, he huka, he hauhu, te hei, mauri ora. Kia ora whanau, ka kite.